Broadbridge may be presumed to have had a town hall from at least the 13th century, but in an otherwise well-documented settlement, there is no record at all of when or by whom it was built, although, as you can see, the medieval carpenters left their numbering on the beams as an aid to construction. There is, though, a note of the purchase of three logs for the hall in 1474, and of the retiling of the roof, hipped at each end with small gablets, in 1544, when, without any charge on the town, the building is most likely to have been reconstructed by the wealthy mayor, Thomas Norton. Do admire the attractive herringbone brick noggin of the close-studded frame of the first floor which is jetted on three sides of the two bays. Now look inside at the magnificent crown post and the great tie beam. But do not go to jail. It isn't very comfortable, even now. Although hanging was the most common method of inflicting capital punishment elsewhere, most of the sank ports had other methods. In Fordwich, criminals were taken to the thief's well, their hands tied under their legs, and then thrust down and drowned. Many people were charged with crimes punishable by death, but most were pardoned, though murderers and felons were only allowed to escape death once. The last prisoners to be held in Fordwich jail were three men from Canterbury who were caught poaching the Fordwich trout in 1855. They were sentenced to 14 days and their nets were publicly burnt in front of the town hall. A woman convicted of scolding, quarrelling or slandering was compelled to walk through the town carrying over her shoulder a wooden mortar hanging on the handle of an old broom with a piper or other minstrel going before her, making a laughing stock of her. This mode of punishment was later exchanged for immersion in the river, in the ducking stool, which still remains in the town hall. Did you mention something tonic on it? The courtroom heard all criminal cases in Fordwich until 1886. The accused would stand flanked by the town constables at the pleading bar, situated at the head of the stairs, hence the expression prisoner at the bar. The mayor was the judge, and he sat in the chair at the north end of the room, flanked by six jurats on each side, seated on the bench, another term still in use. In the corner of the courtroom is a small room where twelve jurors be confined without meat, drink, fire or candle, or contact with others, until they reached a unanimous verdict. The toll board reminds us of a time when revenue was generated by the movement of goods in and out of the area. On the wall above the mayor and jurat seats can be seen a large painting dated 1874. This is a copy of Charles II, Royal Arms of 1660. There are also two lists of mayors, those from 1292 until 1884, and the other, the mayors since 1976, when Fordwich was granted town status again. This 13th century muniment chest was used for hundreds of years to store Fordwich's records, accounts, correspondence and charters. This chest had three different blocks, of which three people each held the key, and as a security measure, all had to be present when the chest was opened. As time passed, it was obvious that Fordwich was too small to continue as a self-governing borough, and incorporation was withdrawn in 1886. The last mayor was Charles James Cox. However, in 1976, Fordwich was renamed a town to reflect its former autonomy.
Fordwich still maintains its ties with the Sandports and has a mayor deputy to the mayor of Sandwich and pays its contribution of the ship money. Every year, attended by civic dignitaries from Canterbury, Sandwich and its other limbs, Fordwich hosts a civic service in the church.